Hi everybody, welcome back to Cotto Verdi. Today is another super exciting day because we're doing more planting and the area that we're planting is around the base of this arch. Now this arch is not a new arch, we've had it for a few years, um, but this is a new spot for it. And um, we've chosen to move it here because it's going to be a really um, good connection between this part of the garden. Um, let me see if I can show you where we are here and getting through to that side um, along the yew hedge. You can see all the plants waiting to go in. So what we're going to do today is plant up this whole area with the plants that we've chosen. I'm going to put a picture up on the screen and describe the plants to you, show you what they look like and their eventual size. And then hopefully you'll get an idea about what I envisage for this particular area and how gorgeous and fragrant it's going to be throughout the season. So uh, this arch actually is a pergola. Um, you can see that it is quite long. I can't actually remember the measurements. I'll put the measurements up on the screen for this particular um, pergola here, uh, but this is not an advert. I'm not selling this or recommending it. In fact, I'm not even going to mention the manufacturer because I'm not 100% sure about the quality of this one yet. Um, but I am very excited to have it. It looks fairly robust. And in fact, it's exactly the same as the massive arch, rose arch that we've got that leads onto our lawn space. If you've seen that archway, in fact, I'll put a link to that particular video where we put that arch up. Um, but this is the same design and the same product, but this is a pergola. Um, and a pergola is just, you know, a couple of arches stuck together, essentially. So it's something that you can walk through. Give you an idea of where we're standing. Uh, this is the grass border that we've just been planting up and that is what we call the bottom bed where Richard's weeding and this through here over there that is the massive garden arch um, where we planted some roses this is what we call the dahlia bed because it used to have dahlias in it oh that's a bit wonky um, and this is where the new archway is our patio is over here this is the Harrod horticultural arch that we put up in a previous video so this is where we are and this is the new pergola and we're going to plant this whole area around here today you can see that we've got some landscape fabric down i think we're going to put some bark mulch or chippings um, for the pathway at the moment until we do this entire pathway and then it will all just be you know exactly the same thing but for now i think what we're going to do is um as I said, just put bark chippings down. We're just having to adjust the bed, which we completely forgot to do, even though when we put the pergola in, we realized that we would need to do this um, because the foot of the pergola here is actually just in, well, I put grass in inverted commas because it's just weeds, but we need to take this area out um, so that we can plant around that particular post. Whilst we're just prepping that part of the bed, I'm going to start letting you know um, the plants that we've chosen for this area. Now, the first ones that I want to mention are the two clematis. So there's one over on this corner and one over on this corner. So the far corners of the pergola are going to have a clematis each on each side. And the clematis that I've chosen for this is called Guernsey Cream. And these plants were actually a wonderful Mother's Day gift from my son, um, so I'm delighted with these. I did choose the actual plants that I wanted, but I think plants are so much better than flowers. Um, so I'm very happy about that. Um, these clematis are going to grow to two meters by two meters. So they will clamber up each side of the pergola and they can look absolutely gorgeous. So obviously with the name Guernsey Cream, um, we know that they are going to be lovely creamy white blooms they're kind of rounded and they've got a primrose yellow bar down the center when they first open and the bar also looks a little bit greenish i would say like pale green in some photos uh, the flowers get to 12 centimeters wide um, so they're lovely big flowers this is a group two clematis um, which i find very easy to prune so you give them a light prune uh, twice a year or if you want to reinvigorate the plant um, you can give it a hard prune in the spring but I won't be pruning these clematis this year because they're brand new so I'm just going to let them grow um, the thing about this particular clematis is that um, you could have just the flowers as um, cream with the primrose yellow or green stripe to them um, but that will only be possible if they're planted in 
a shadier spot because that stripe or bar is going to fade if they get too much sun. So these clematis are going to flower between May and June and then if we deadhead them they should flower again between August and September. So it is important to deadhead them if you want the second flush um, and also to give them a good tomato feed because that will um, prompt them to produce more flowers. When planting clematis, it's really important to plant them deeply. And in fact, um, the instructions from this particular clematis breeder say to plant them three inches deeper than they are in the pots. So we're going to be digging some fairly deep holes to get these into the ground. Also, we need to put some really good compost or well-rotted farmyard manure at the bottom. So they are very, they need a lot of nutrients. And so if your soil is pretty rubbish, like ours is deep down, um, then it's important to add some really good compost or, or farmyard manure to the bottom of the planting hole. And it's important to um, put it right at the bottom of the hole rather than all the way around the hole because if you put it at the bottom of the hole then that um, makes the roots go deeper and clematis roots um, like to go deep but if you planted the goodness around the root ball then the roots aren't encouraged to go deeper into the soil. So clematis like to have their roots in the shade. The other thing I just want to mention about clematis is that new plants uh, could take a few years until they're flowering at their very best. So you will get flowers the first year, but it won't be until the second or third year that we get you know, really good flowers because they need to focus their energy on rooting in. There is a saying about clematis and that is first year roots, second year shoots and third year flowers. So now I'm going to talk about the roses that I've chosen for this pergola. I'm very excited about these roses. Uh, the first one is a rose called Woolerton Old Hall. It's a David Austin rose and that is this rose here and this is a fantastic climbing rose. I have wanted this rose for so long. It's looking super super healthy and I'm really happy with the rose that I was sent by David Austin. So this rose is going to grow to 3.75 metres, which Richard reliably informs me is about 12 feet. So it is going to absolutely cover this pergola. I cannot wait. It is a gorgeous, fragrant climber. The fragrance is lovely, warmer, with hints of citrus, and it's got beautiful, rounded, chalice-shaped blooms. They start apricot and eventually pale to cream. As with most roses, it likes full sun, um, or it can tolerate semi-shade, but I am planting it in a spot where it is going to get sun most of the day. All day, actually. It's going to get sun all day. This rose is another rose that I ordered from David Austin. Um, it's called Felicia. It came as a bare root. Uh, this is a shrub rose that grows to one and a half metres by 1.2 metres. So that's about five foot by four foot. Uh, so it's definitely going to fill in this space really nicely. It's got a wonderfully aromatic, fruity, musky fragrance and beautiful, pretty pink buds that open out to light silvery pink blooms that deepen in colour towards the centre. They've been described as rather informal in shape so I think they're just going to add to the cottage garden feel over here. It's a really good bushy shrub that flowers freely and repeat flowers all season long and it's great for shady areas or hedges and so that's why I've chosen to put it here because next to it we have this lilac syringia um, so it's got lovely white flowers but it is going to create some shades um, from the south um, for quite a lot of the day so I think even though this is going to get a lot of morning sun and afternoon sun from the other direction actually it is going to get some shade in this particular spot and I think Felicia would do quite well here. At the front of the arch on this side, I've got another lovely rose. This one is called Penny Lane. It's going to grow to 5.5 metres tall, which is about 18 foot. The flowers are a beautiful honey champagne colour. I think they're gorgeous and it's got quite a light fragrance. But I really don't think with all the other roses that it's going to matter as much. And it is planted in fairly decent sun here. It's going to get sun for at least half the day. Um, and it will depend how dense the Woolerton Olds Hall is, um, how much sun it will get after that. But I think it's going to be very happy in that spot. Over on this side, next to the miniature conifer, I'm planting a 
gorgeous rose called Robin Hood. Uh, this is from a different supplier, it's not a David Austin, but it's another shrub rose that goes to, grows to 1.2 metres by 90 centimetres, so that's four foot by three foot. Um, this is a hybrid musk rose. Um, it has little or no fragrance, which is fine because the rest of the pergola is going to have loads of fragrance, but what it does have is trusses of small semi-double rich scarlet flowers. Um, they have a white base to each petal. It's a lovely tidy lush plant and is quite compact with dark foliage and I think that is going to fit in really well in that spot there. Because it's got less petals and it has a lovely open centre it's very wildlife friendly um, and it's also tolerant of poor soils and extreme weather like too much sun or too much rain so I'm delighted to have it and I think it's just going to be a really nice colour. This border over here is actually quite pink so I think the deep colour of Robin Hood there is going to be brilliant. Over in this area here there, there's little these little grey pots there's one just behind this rose as well. This is a verbena called Bampton. It's going to grow to one metre tall by 75 centimetres wide and it's got lovely bronze purpley flush foliage and the spikes are tiny little small violet pink flowers and they will flower from June right the way through to September and it forms this sort of light airy clump which is perfect for I think a cottage garden feel or if you've got like a naturalized scheme um, it will go really well there. It's tolerant of poor soil and drought although we do have a watering system here if it gets too dry and it will self seed quite freely but the seedlings might not be as intense in colour so it's better to propagate it from cuttings or division. Um, it's also important to cut it back after flowering because it can look quite ugly I think it goes quite black so once it's flowers just cut it down. The other verbena is in amongst these alliums here. So these three plants here are an astrantia that I've planted in a few other beds, but I think it's gorgeous. It's an astrantia called Venice, which is a masterwort, and it will grow to 75 centimeters tall by 45 wide, so quite small. So this is a lovely shade loving plant. Um, it will tolerate some sun, which it's going to get in the afternoons, but um, this is going to be a shady area, especially when this clematis starts leafing out. I think this area will get a lot of shade. It's going to get shade from the other side of the bed as well. So that's why I've chosen a shade loving plant for this spot. So Estrangias have gorgeous star shaped flowers. This one, Venice, has got deep burgundy, sort of Victorian Victoria plum coloured flowers and it will flower for a really long time between May and September especially if you deadhead it. It's slug resistant, loved by pollinators, ideal for cutting and drying, it's perfect for cottage garden planting schemes and I've got a feeling um, I'm going to plant maybe some Alcamilla mollis in the front here because I think it's going to contrast really nicely. So the little pots at the base of each of the poles of the pergola are a gorgeous gypsophila. This gypsophila is just a paniculata called pink. Um, it's baby's breath if you haven't heard of it and baby's breath has got gorgeous tangling branches and it forms these cloud-like masses of flowers. So there's going to be like a, a massive pink at the bottom of each side of the pergola. It's fairly drought tolerant and loves a sunny spot so I think it's perfectly placed here. It isn't evergreen unfortunately but it is perfect for cut flowers. It's going to flower from July through August um, but when not in flower there will be a lovely drift at the base of each rose arch of greenery. These three plants here are a Campanula lactiflora called Lod and Anna. This is also known as a milky bellflower. These are going to grow to one and a half meters by 60 centimeters. This companion has got tall branching stems of the palest pink soft lilac-y bell-shaped flowers. It's going to flower from July through September. It's an award-winning cottage garden classic and it looks perfect with old roses or for the back of the border but it will need staking which is why I have lined it up here next to the pergola so that I'm going to be able to tie it in without actually providing too much support hopefully. It's going to self-seed freely and it's loved by pollinators and I have read that um, the flower colour is more intense if planted 
planted in shade. So again, as with the Felicia Rose, um, I feel like this lilac, as it leaves out each year, is going to provide shade in this spot. So this is a really good spot for us to be able to get the best colour from the Campanula. Right in the front here, I've got a Salvia nemorosa, and this one is called Schwellenberg. Um, it's a meadow sage or Balkan clary, and it's going to grow to one meter tall by 50 centimeters wide. So not particularly big. Um, it likes full sun and a hummus rich soil. Salvia Schwellenberg is a dense upright perennial with gray green foliage and lovely rose tinted purple flowers. And it's going to flower for a really long time if it's deadheaded regularly. It'll flower from July right through September. It is a slightly messy looking plant so I think it's going to look really good in on this side of the bed near the grasses. It likes full sun and a hummus rich soil and it is really important to mulch it in spring. <laughs> The other thing we've planted today is some peacock lilies. I found some really economical bulbs in the garden centre the other day. Um, these are Gladioli calianthus. I think they're also called Acidantra. Um, I'm not sure, I'll have to look that up. Um, but I've kind of scattered a few around. There aren't that many, but they should have a wonderful aroma. And I think they're going to look really pretty in this cottage garden border. We've been so lucky with the weather, but it is clouding over and it's supposed to rain this afternoon. So we're in a desperate rush just to get this finished and what we're doing is in the pathway we're going to put down some weed suppressing membrane it's just an old piece that we have um, from ages ago it's we haven't bought it new but it's probably beneficial to put it down we have a lot of ground elder and stuff um, so we're going to put that down and then we're going to spread a layer of bark on top now we haven't opened the bags to check but this bark has been in our shed for a considerable number of years uh, so it could just all be mulch or it could still be bark I don't know it's been dry so it should be all right but um, that's what we're going to put here as a path temporarily eventually we will do the entire strip um, in a proper gravel pathway or we may even put cobbles or bricks down but we haven't quite decided yet and that is a project for another day once we've made more flower beds because that's the priority is to get plants in the garden and then as long as we know where the paths are we'll deal with what they're going to be at a later date and um, that's how we're doing it I know a lot of people say to plan the hardscaping first and then put the plants in but this is what we're doing because we just need plants in the garden so uh, Richard's putting down this membrane, we'll chuck some bulk on top and then now that I've watered in all the plants um, we'll spread some mulch on top of that. I say we, it's the royal we because Richard's going to spread the mulch, um, that's his job. <laughs> I do the planning and the buying and some of the planting but Richard can spread the mulch, he likes doing it, it's very satisfying and it makes everything look neat and tidy but it's really important to mulch the roses and to mulch the clematis. Um, the clematis really want their roots to be cool um, so get, mul get mulch on top of your clematis if you're planting them this season or any season. I'll show you what it looks like when it's finished but for now before it pours with rain I'm going to say thank you so much for watching. If you've enjoyed this video then do give it a like, hit the like button it really does help me and if you want to see more videos like this then do subscribe to my channel we're going to have absolutely loads of projects going on this summer and all my dahlias are going to look spectacular hopefully. This shrub here is a Styrax japonica pink chimes and it really is one of the first things we planted in this garden. It was tiny but we didn't really know what we were doing and it's taken absolutely ages to settle in. It does have the most gorgeous baby pink flowers um, each year but it really has taken a good 10 years to get to this size it's ridiculous and I think it's just because we didn't put any amendments to the soil when we planted it and um, I also think uh, we didn't water it properly so it's taken a really long time what I've done 
is I got Richard to put a stronger stake in because the plant is much larger now and I wanted to be able to tie it up a bit. Firstly, I don't want it to get in the way of this lovely rose here, but also I want it to be more upright and I'm pretty sure when I planted it that I thought it was going to be a tree rather than a shrub. Um, I will need to look up how tall it gets um, when I get back inside. So apart from mulching, that's it for today. I haven't tied in or separated any of the clematis yet because um, it's not quite long enough. I'm going to wait a month or so before I start tying it in. I just want it to settle and it's just not, I, it wouldn't be beneficial to do anything about that now. Um, but that's it for today. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you all next time. Cosmo! <laughs> He is going to get into so much trouble. <laughs> <laughs>